Hey guys, so I'm back. I'm going to be reading more scary stories to tell in the dark. Sorry, I enjoy filming these videos, so. Anyway. I waited a few days to see, um, well, I've been in suspense because I've been waiting to read these stories and it's going to be great, you know, you know, I guess, <laughs> I don't know. Got to take a drink of my um, sparkling ice drink. It's definitely not sponsored because I'm not a big YouTuber, but I do love that stuff. But anyway, let's get into the stories. The first one is called Alligators. This is where we left off, and I'm so excited to read the story. A young woman in town married a man from another part of the country. He was a nice fellow, and they got along pretty well together. There was only one problem. Every night, he goes swimming in the river. Sometimes he'd be gone all night long, and she would complain about how lonely she was. The cup, This couple had two young sons. As soon as the boys could walk, their father began to teach them how to swim. And when they got to be old enough, he took them swimming in the river at night. Often, they would stay there all night long, and the young woman would stay home all by herself. After a while, she began to act in a strange way. At least that is what the neighbors said. She told them that her husband was turning into an alligator and that he was trying to turn the boys into alligators. Everybody told her there was nothing wrong with a man taking his son swimming. That was a natural thing to do. And when it came to alligators, there just weren't any near nearby. Everybody knew that. Early one morning, the young woman came running into town from the direction of the river. She was soaking wet. She said a big alligator and two little alligators had pulled her in and had tried to get her to eat a raw fish. They were her husband and her sons. She said they wanted her to live with them, but she had gotten away. Her doctor decided she had lost her mind and he had her put in the hospital for a while. After that, nobody saw her husband and boys again. They just disappeared, but now and then, a fisherman would tell about seeing alligators in the river at night. Usually it was one big alligator and two small ones, but people said they were just making it up. Everybody knows there aren't any alligators around here. And there's a picture of the alligator. It looks like it's smiling. That's so freaking creepy. You see it? I'm trying to make sure y'all can see it. It looks like it's smiling. It's really creepy. Like, if I saw an alligator smiling at me like that, I would run the other direction. I mean, I probably wouldn't go any go into any water that could possibly hold an alligator, you know? Because alligators are scary. I'm going to just see how long this one is because uh, I can't wait to read the story after this story. Okay, so let me just get into this one. Room for One More is the name of this story. A man named Joseph Blackwell came to Philadelphia on a business trip. He stayed with friends in the big house they owned outside the city. That night, they had a good time visiting, but when Blackwell went to bed, he tossed and turned and couldn't sleep. Sometime during the night, he heard... <sighs> I'm so sorry. Sometime, sometime during the night, he heard a car turn into his driveway. He went to the window to see who was arriving at such a late hour. In the moonlight, he saw a long black hearse filled with people. The driver of the hearse looked up at him. When Blackwell saw his queer, hideous face, he shuddered. Then the driver called to him. There is room for one more. Then he waited for a minute or two and drove off. In the, mo in the morning, Blackwell told his friends what, he ha what had happened. Sorry, I can't talk. No. What had happened. You were dreaming, they said. I must have been, he said, but it didn't seem like a dream. After breakfast, he went into the, he went into Philadelphia. He spent his day high and above the city in one of the new office buildings there. Late in the afternoon, he was waiting for an elevator to take him back down to the street. But when it arrived, it was very crowded. One of the passengers looked out and called to him. There is room for one more, he said. It was the driver of the hearse. No thanks, said Blackwell. I'll get the next one. The doors closed and the elevator started down. There was shrieking and screaming and the sound of a crash. The elevator had fallen to the bottom of the shaft. 
Everyone aboard was killed. That's a very, very tragic story. I did not expect that to happen, you know? That's very, very scary. And then there's just, like, some statues, I guess you could say. So this is the one that I was so excited to read because yeah, I just love this legend. It's called The Wendigo. And I was actually watching a video earlier. Well, actually, I'm still kind of watching it. But I stopped watching it to film this video because I saw this story and I was like, I have to read the story. But I was watching a video about, um, there was a story about SW. And if you don't know what that means, that means skinwalker, which I'm going to say it once. But because I don't want them coming to me. But yeah, it was about an SW and it made me think of this story. And probably shouldn't have said the W word either, but you know. It is what it is. Um, I'm terrified, but I'll be praying tonight, okay? I promise I'll be praying. So this is called the Wendigo, and I said it again. I'm sorry, I'm so stupid. A wealthy man wanted to go hunting in a part of northern Canada where few people had ever hunted. He traveled to a trading post and tried to find a guide to take him, but no one would do it. It was too dangerous, they said. Finally, he found it, and he did. <sighs> I'm so sorry. Finally, he found an Indian who needed money badly, and he agreed to take him. The Indian's name was DeFago. They made camp in the snow near a large frozen lake for three days. They hunted, or they made camp in the snow near a large frozen lake. For three days, they hunted, but they had nothing to show for it. The third night, with a windstorm came up, they lay in their tent listening to the wind howling and the trees whipping back and forth. To see the storm better, the hunter opened the tent flap. What he saw startled him. There wasn't a breath of air staring, and the trees were standing perfectly still. Yet he could hear the wind howling, and the more he listened, the more it sounded as if it were calling DeFago's name. DeFago, it called... DeFago. Sorry, my arm's like up in the air. I'm sorry. I must be losing my mind, the hunter thought. But DeFago had gotten out of a sleeping bag. He was huddled in a corner of the tent, his head buried in his arms. What's all this about, the hunter asked. It's nothing DeFago said. I don't know. I'll show you a picture real quick and get this notification out of the way. There's a picture of footsteps, which is... I think you ever want to see when you're out in the wilderness. What's all this about? The hunter asked. It's nothing to peg us in. <sighs> Sorry. But, but the wind continued to call to him, and DeFago became more tense and more restless. DeFago, it called. DeFago. Suddenly, he jumped to his feet, and he began to run from the tent. But the hunter grabbed him and wrestled him to the ground. You can't leave me out here, the hunter shouted. And the wind called again, and DeFago broke loose and ran into the darkness. The hunter could hear him screaming as he went. Again and again he cried, Oh, my fury feet, my burning feet of fire. Then his voice faded away, and the wind died down. At daybreak, the hunter followed DeFago's tracks in the snow. They went through the woods, down toward the lake, then out, of, then out onto the ice. But soon he noticed something strange. The steps DeFago had taken got longer and longer. They were so long, no human being could have taken them. It was as if something had helped him to hurry away. The hunter followed the tracks out to the middle of the lake, but they were the. Yeah, I can't talk. The hunter followed the tracks out to the middle of the lake, but there, but there they disappeared. At first, he thought that DeFago had fallen through the ice, but there wasn't any hole. Then he thought that something had pulled him off the ice into the sky, but that made no sense. As he stood wondering what happened, the wind picked up again. Soon it was howling as it had the night before. Then he heard DeFago's voice. It was coming from up above, and again he heard DeFago screaming. Stupid notifications. My fiery feet, my burning feet, but there was nothing to be seen. Valley Hunter wanted to leave that place as fast as he could. He went back to camp and packed then he left some food for DeFago, and he started out. Weeks later, he reached civilization. The following year, he went back to hunt in that area again. He went to the same trading post to look for a guide. 
The people there could not explain what had happened to Defago that night, but they had not seen him since then. Maybe it was the Wendigo, one of them said, and he laughed. It's supposed to come with the wind. It drags you along at great speed until your feet are burned away and more of you than that. Then it carries you into the sky and it drops you. It's just a crazy story, but that's what some of the Indians say. A few days later, the hunter was at the trading post again. An Indian came in and sat by the fire. He had a blanket wrapped around him, and he wore his hat so that you couldn't see his face. The hunter thought there was something familiar about him. He walked over, and he asked, Are you DeFago? The Indian didn't answer. Do you know anything about him? No answer. He began to wonder if something was wrong, if the man needed help, but he couldn't see his face. Are you all right? He asked. No answer. To get a look at him, he lifted the Indian's hat, and he screamed. There was nothing under the hat but a pile of ashes. That That's terrifying. That's why um, I don't ever want to encounter one. I don't want to encounter the SW or the W. I'm like, no, thank you. But that's all I'm going to read in this video because I... Didn't shut up for long enough, and I'm sorry, but I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye.